In this video, guys, we're gonna look at five tips to become a better scalper. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for tuning in. All right, so I've got for you five tips to become a better scalper. If you've got six, seven, eight, whatever it may be, comments in the comment section below. Always interested to hear other people's perspective on trading because often it opens up your mind. You go down a little rabbit hole, you do some research, you find a little strategy that might work for you. You put it into your own trading and that's what it's all about, guys. We are all here to become better traders, whatever level we are at, whether we're on our first trade or our one millionth trade, whether we're trading with a 10 pound account or a 10 million pound account, we're all here to improve. So let's go, right? So if you're a scalper, you're gonna know that it can be a very, very pleasant way to trade. When it's working for you, there's nothing better. You sit down in front of the screen, you see your opportunity, you make your move, you grab your profit, you grab your profit. At the end of the day, you look back, you look at the multiple trades and go, yeah, you know what? I have extracted a lot of money from the market. It's been a great day. But you also know on the flip side that when it's a bad day, it's a horrible day. You can't seem to do anything right. You're on the wrong side of the market. It's smacking you around. It's bashing you. It's stopping you around. You feel like you've gotten 12 rounds with Mike Tyson. You've been literally chucked out of the ring and you think, whoo, day two, here we go. And it's all over again. But anyway, here's five tips that I know will make you a better scalper. Number one, stick to one market. Forget about trying to be every single market. And I know some people say, well, I can trade two markets. And honestly, guys, I've kind of tried this myself where I've gone, listen, I'm gonna be very aggressively day trading. And inevitably, you know what, you think that you're getting double the opportunity. You think, well, I'm gonna trade these two markets because these two are both good. You think you're gonna get double opportunity. And I'm talking about, by the way, two markets at the same time. There's nothing wrong with trading, let's say, DAX in the morning and Dow in the afternoon because Dow wasn't open in the morning or something like that, or trading, you know, doing them two separately. Like I trade, you could say I trade yen in this hour because it's active and I trade pound in this hour. That's fine. But on the same time, do not trade more. Well, I recommend not trading more than one simultaneously. Now, can you do it? Yes, you can do it. but. I don't never see any incremental gain. I always think it's better to go really focused on one market because when you're scalping, you have to know every little nuance, every little feel. And when you're moving from one market to the next, it's so much extra load and such a minimal gain. You start to get minimal gain, like yeah, you do get some more opportunity potentially, but you end up losing track of what's happened with that. You're focused on that market because you're in a position, then this one sets up, you don't know what it is, and you're all over the place. Whereas you're better off missing opportunities, being able to capitalize on the ones that are in one market or uh, better than spreading yourself too thin. In my opinion, it's spread yourself too thin. It can be done, yes it can, but I think it'll make you a better scalper if you just say, you know what, I'm gonna trade this one market and one market alone and become an absolute specialist, the best in the world at understanding that market, better than anybody else at knowing the nuances of those one minute candles, the tick charts, the time and sales, whatever you make your decision from, just becoming a super, super specialist. And that comes with time, with screen time, with trading one market. And if it's the right market, you've picked the right market, then you will become a better scalper. Right, number two, trade in one direction only. What I mean by this, pick your direction. I can't tell you the amount of frustrating times where I've tried to be too clever. Markets come down, I've thought, oh, I'm gonna buy this long, but I, I think it's gonna break through that low, so let me just smash it short and make a little bit of money on the short, so then I'll flip it. And, and you hit it short, it's too late, you're a bit nervous because you think it's long anyway, you cover the position, it goes up, you're late. It's just a mess. Align yourself with one direction. So you say to yourself, okay, I'm looking for a good long in this market now. Wait for the pullback, there's a pullback, bang, I'm long, I'm out. Bang, I'm long, I'm out. Rather than trying to trade two different directions. Now, that's not to say you can't flip directions during the day, but only look for one specific type of trade. So let's say in the morning, hey, I'm looking for a morning opening drive, or if it pulls back, I'm looking for a long in the morning. So if it goes low, instead of thinking, oh, it's going low and going on the short side, okay, well, let it, let it run out of steam and let me jump on the long side. So you're always looking for that long because that's the way you're positioned. Oh, it's rallying, let me wait for the pullback to get on. Oh, it's gone too far, let me wait now and then wait for the next move. So it keeps, it, you're trying to make things easier, like the one market, just keeping yourself aligned. Now, it's not to say, Later on in the day, don't go right, things have changed, I'm staying on the short side now. So then you start to scout from the short side only rather than the long side. But the point is don't try and do two at once. You shouldn't have long, then short, then short, then long, then long, long, long. It should be 
in sequence of how you see the market. And if there isn't a trade, and if you're wrong, you perceive you're wrong, then no trade rather than trying to flip it. I think that'll help you uh, become a better scalper. Right, number three, limit screen time. No matter how good we think we are, guys, we're all human beings and staring at that screen or those screens is tiring. So generally break up your day. A normal day, say to yourself, okay, assuming we're scalping, let's assume it's an index or if it's a currency pair. Morning, when that stock market opens, gonna be active. It's gonna be two or three hours of good activity there. Um, then lunchtime, generally it's quiet. So utilize that and say, you know what? Most of the time it's quiet. Let me have a break. Let me go away and I'll trade the evening session and the morning session. So you have got that break so you can rest, you can relax. Or maybe the lunchtime session works for you better. You've got to do that. Whatever you do, don't sit there all day. Say to yourself, you know what? I give myself maybe three credits of sitting there all day per month. And that allows you, if it's really, really active and you're really on a thread there, then you can sit there all day. But you can't do it every single day. That's the point, guys. You need to limit that screen time. That will make you a better scalpel because by the time, you know what happens, right? From experience, again, as, as many of these videos are, guys, trading along, doing very well in the morning, you think, oh, I'm gonna keep going. You trade through lunchtime, you kind of, tread water a bit you probably make a little a, a more of a loser than you want to you get it back and you're kind of there and you look and say well i'm pretty much where i was now and then by the time it comes to the afternoon you're drained you're tired you've been fighting and battling for hours for no reason great setups are coming in the final hour which are often opportunities to jump on some sort of momentum and you can't take them you're kind of misjudging them and it just ends up being a, you know a negative expectancy by trading during that lunchtime so limit that screen time guys okay number three be very aware of emotions. You've got to be so emotionally aware because frustration can set in very easily when you're scalping, very, very easily. If you lose in a row in a very short space of time and you're angry, you're like, oh, I can't believe that. I've misjudged that. And the market ends up going your way. You've kind of been stopped out. You can get frustrated. You've got to be so aware because that's where the danger is. Scalping in itself isn't that dangerous. You've effectively got a very short stop and a, a, a short target, small target. And, and, and on its own, it's not. But if you're constantly losing money and you're trading angrily and you've got the vulnerability of trading more size than you should and letting things run on more than you should, that's when significant damage can come because your size is normally bigger. You're holding stuff longer because you don't want to get stopped out. So you've got to watch that. You've got to watch your emotions, guys. Keep an eye on that emotional thermometer that we talked about a couple of times in videos before. Number five, knowing when to hold. So I think one of the tricks with scalping is you tread water a lot of the time. You put some money, you lose some, you put some, you lose some. You kind of make little gains throughout the day. You put some money on the books, but then you're waiting for the opportunity when you can just hold that position a little bit more to your in your favor. It's working well. You're always alert for that. You're like, listen, I'm going to get scalped. Yeah, grabbing 10 ticks here, six pips here, whatever it may be, scalping for you. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm on this now. I could normally grab 10, but you know what? It looks like this thing's going to stretch. It looks like it's going to explode into the midday into the midday kind of uh, push. It looks like it's going to be the end of a trend. It looks like we're going to get exhaustion. Let me hold it. Let me hold it. Let me hold it. And it's knowing when to hold on to that winner just for that extra few minutes to ex ex you know grab that extra kind of 10, 20, 30, even 40 pips out of it. Then that's massive because you've taken no additional risk for that, and all of a sudden you've got that, and that really gives you a boost. And that's that's kind of it's a tricky thing to 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 get, but ultimately that's what gives you those incremental boosts in your equity curve and pushes you to the next level, pushes you to the next level. Yes, scalping's fine, but just having those ones that just, oh, yeah, I'm on the right one, okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, just see if I can get it. Uh, and that's when you really kind of get those boosts. So just figuring out when those opportunities are. It might be a set of rules for you. It might be just based on how you feel about it. Obviously, you never do that from a stop side perspective, but you know, scalping a lot of it is, is feel as well as rules. So uh, there's five for you guys, five tips to become a better, a better scalper. If you've got any, uh, stick in the comment section below. Like I say, always interested to hear what you guys have got to say. Whatever you're doing, whatever strategy, please keep that risk managed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.